Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part 6 of our How to Play Kill Team series. I'm Lee and in this video I'll be taking you through all the rules you need to know for fighting in close combat. So far in the series we've gone through part 1 which is the introduction and tools of war right through and up to shooting and range combat. But now it's time to look at fighting in close combat. The fight action is an action your active operative can make against an enemy operative. An operative cannot perform this action unless it is within engagement range of an enemy operative. To fight in combat, there's a fight sequence and that's exactly what we're going to go through in this video. In this four step fight sequence, the player controlling the active operative is known as the attacker and the player controlling the target operative is known as the defender. Let's get started with step one where we select a valid target. The attacker selects a valid target for combat. A valid target is an enemy operative in the active operative's engagement range. The rules for determining if the target operative is visible will be covered in line of sight and I'll be going through this in a later video. If there are no valid targets for combat, the fight action cannot be resolved and you must choose a different action for the operative. The action points subtracted for the fight action are then refunded to you. In step two of the fight sequence, we select melee weapons. The attacker selects one melee weapon their operative is equipped with and collects their attack dice. The defender then selects one melee weapon their operative is equipped with and collects their attack dice. Each player's attack dice are a number of d6 equal to their selected weapon's attacks characteristic. Now we're on to step three where we roll attack dice. Both players roll their attack dice simultaneously. Each result that equals or beats their selected weapon's weapon skill characteristic is a successful hit and is retained. Each that doesn't is a failed hit and is discarded. A result of six is always a successful hit and a result of one is always a failed hit. Keep track of each retained result of six. This is a critical hit. Each other retained success is a normal hit. Now we're on to the final step, which is step four, where we resolve successful hits. Starting with the attacker, each player alternates resolving one of their successful hits. They repeat this process until one operative in that combat is incapacitated or they have no more hits to resolve, in which case their opponent resolves all of their remaining hits. To resolve a successful hit, they select one of their retained attack dice, choose for their operative to strike or parry, and then discard the attack dice. If they parry, one of their opponent's successful hits is discarded. If the attack dice they select is a normal hit, they select one of their opponent's normal hits to be discarded. If the attack dice they select is a critical hit, they select one of their opponent's normal hits or critical hits to be discarded. If they choose to strike, then inflict damage on the target. If the attack dice they select is a normal hit, inflict damage equal to their selected weapon's normal damage. If the attack dice they select is a critical hit, then inflict damage equal to their selected weapon's critical damage. When fighting in close combat, there's a rule called combat support. And each time an operative fights in combat, for each other friendly operative that supports them in that combat, improve the weapon skill characteristic of melee weapons they are equipped with by one for that combat. For a friendly operative to support them, it must be within engagement range of the enemy operative in that combat and not within engagement range of other enemy operatives. That covers the four step fight sequence and combat support, 
So then let's go through a little example just so we can really get to grips with how this works in the game. The commando fights in combat. The attacker, which is the commando's controlling player, selects the veteran guardsman as the target. The attacker selects the commando's chopper as the melee weapon to fight in the combat with and collects four attack dice. The defender, the veteran guardsman controlling player, then selects the veteran guardsman's bayonet and collects three attack dice. The attacker and defender roll their attack dice simultaneously. The attacker rolls these dice. The results of one and two are discarded as they do not equal or beat the weapon's WS characteristic and the rest are retained as successful hits. The defender rolls these dice. The result of one is discarded as it does not equal or beat their weapon's WS characteristic and the rest are retained as successful hits. The attacker resolves a successful hit first. They select their attack dice result of six and choose to parry. As the retained attack dice is a critical hit, they select their opponent's critical hit to be discarded. The defender then resolves a successful hit. They select their attack dice result of four and choose to strike. As the retained attack dice is a normal hit, they inflict normal damage on the commando. The attacker's remaining attack dice is now this dice. And the defender has no remaining attack dice. Finally, the attacker resolves a successful hit again. They select their remaining attack dice result of four and choose to strike. As the retained attack dice is a normal hit, they inflict normal damage on the veteran guardsman. Both players now have no remaining attack dice. The veteran guardsman operative has lost a total of four wounds and the commando operative has lost a total of two wounds. That now covers all the rules for fighting in close combat. So come and join me for the next part of this video series where we look at wounds and damage and also controlling objective markers and tokens. You can find loads of other videos on my channel for Kill Team and other games and these videos include painting, deep dives, how to play and many other topics. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and if you've got any questions please add them in the comments section below. It'd be great to hear from you and if I can help you out in any way that would be awesome too. But thanks so much for watching, can't wait to see you in the next episode of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel then please check out my Patreon page and thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome, we hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there.